and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is troubleshooting Power Automate desktop automations. Let's go. Okay, so now why is this episode important? Recently, Microsoft updated the Power Automate desktop to include sending telemetry to the cloud from Power Automate desktop itself. I've got a snippet of the blog post here. You can see it at the link. I'll include the link in the description as well. And really the, the purpose of this is what we do have is naturally we've got API flows that run in the cloud. They've had rich input, output, step-by-step -step telemetry being captured. And that's something that we've all grown to appreciate and love as part of the Power Automate service itself. Now, what happened when Win Automation was introduced into the fold, it was technically a separate tool. It was a separate technology and we didn't have the logs from the desktop automations actually making their way back up into the cloud. But with this release, and this is called out in the October 2020 release, we now have this. And so as a result, we can actually send our telemetry back up to the cloud and really give you this end-to-end -end holistic troubleshooting experience. And the purpose of today's episode is I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step about how all of that works. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. All right, just to illustrate the concepts here as well, and I've obviously abstracted some of the underlying details from this, but this will give you a sense of, of what's gonna happen here. So naturally we have API flows, we have all of the inputs and outputs, and basically the duration step-by-step, -step, all of that data being stored uh, in a repository in the cloud where we can actually go ahead and access all of this information. Now what we're seeing is we're gonna see the Power Automate desktop flow experience and all of those that telemetry being sent to the cloud. And then in addition, there is a concept inside of Power Automate Desktop known as subflows. It's kind of like the equivalent of a child flow inside of the cloud. But here we also are able to capture this telemetry and to be able to send that back up to the cloud itself. So in the demo that I'm going to show you, we're going to walk through all of these different examples of having an API flow. We're also going to have a desktop flow. And then we're also going to have a subflow that is also called and see all of that information making its way back up into the cloud itself. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at the demo. Okay, so here is my API flow. So this is my automated flow that exists up inside of the cloud itself. It's very simple. All we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to go ahead and call a flow that has been built by Power Automate Desktop itself and we need to pass some inputs and so that's what's what's going on there now if we want to go see the success of this specific execution naturally we can go ahead and click on the run history and so this is nothing new we see the the duration and the time that it took to go ahead and to execute that specific automation that lives inside of our, our power automate desktop experience now not that that's overly important but here is the flow that we are going to go ahead and call. This is the same flow that I had in the previous episode on the channel related to checking a Power BI gateway and getting its status. Now, as part of this, we've got a main, right? So this is our, our main flow that does exist here inside of Power Automate Desktop. And then we also have this notion of subflows, right? So here we've got one subflow called Excel Setup. And I can go ahead and call out into the subflow, execute these steps, and then I return back to the the main flow um, inside of Power Automate Desktop itself. Now, I won't necessarily see all of this telemetry here in the desktop tool, but do know it is making its way back up 
into the cloud. Now, okay, great, how do we go ahead and see that? Now, there's a couple ways you can do that. Number one is you can click on the action itself and you will see the, the regular details we see here about inputs and outputs and, and that's all great. But it's a rather subtle, but it's really important. At the bottom here, we see this C run details link. We can go ahead and click on that. Then what it'll go ahead and do is it will launch essentially our UI flow here view. This is the, the flow that exists, our RPA automation that lives inside of Power Automate Desktop. Now what's important here is we have all of the steps. And there's an important column here called subflow. And so here we can see that we've got main, which is going to be our run subflow step. And then we're going to kick off into that Excel setup subflow that I talked about. And then we're going to return control back to main. And so we can see every single step, right, and how long it took. And then we also have, it's also a little bit hidden, but for a specific action, we can click on it. And then we're going to see the input and output details. So in this case, we are going to copy a file and we can see all of the inputs, right? So we can see the value of the file that we're going to go ahead and copy. Then we can see the value of where it's going to be uh, saved to. And then there's also different properties that are also set as part of that action. And so that's the inputs. And then we can go ahead and see the outputs. And we can see that the, you know, this is where the file has been returned to. And we also have a variable name now set called copy files. Now this provides sort of that, that view of much like we would expect inside of our API flows that orchestrate inside of the cloud, we now see this execution locally itself. So this is probably the most convenient way to go ahead and find this telemetry. We will also be able to go ahead and find it. Um, if we head over to UI flows, we will see all of our Power Automate desktop flows show up here as well. Now this is our specific uh, Power Automate desktop flow that I just talked about before. And so I can go ahead and click on this view as well. And it's essentially going to be the same one that I just showed you previously. We have the same details. We see the same experience. We can go ahead and, and check on inputs and outputs from that perspective as well. So that's uh, essentially the same view. It's just a different way to go ahead and access it. Now there's one more place as well that is worth checking out. Naturally, everything that executes locally on a desktop needs to traverse through a gateway. And so there's also this gateway view that we can go ahead and check out. Now, in this specific example, my gateway is called SV3. If there was a cluster, we would go ahead and see all of the machines that participate in this cluster. In this case, it's not. Uh, we can see its status. But we can also now go ahead and see all of the executions. If we also had flows, uh, Power Automate desktop flows that were waiting to run, we would basically see them queued up here. Now, in this case, this was the recent example. I can go ahead and click on a specific run, and this will pop me into that, once again, that same experience that we talked about before. What is a little bit different about this view, though, is this is going to have the pivot of our gateway machine itself. So I could have multiple Power Automate desktop automations that are using the same gateway. And when I go ahead and use that gateway, they will all surface here. Now, in this case, I'm only running the check gateway status, but if I had another automation that's running inside a pad as well, it would show up here. So it becomes more of that uh, funnel in terms of seeing what is the overall performance of your gateway itself. So, Hopefully this helps explain how you can go ahead and see this telemetry. It is a little bit subtle and that's why I decided to make a video because I've had some questions about this myself. All right, so thanks for checking out yet another episode on the channel. Really appreciate your support. If you're not following me on Twitter, I would encourage you to go ahead and do so. You can find me at Weirzy. You're watching this on YouTube, which is great. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any of the action. I do post at least weekly, sometimes twice a week. And certainly if you did enjoy this video, likes are always appreciated. Thanks and take care. We'll see you again soon on the channel. Take care.